The local campaign season for the 2022 elections kicks off Friday, March 25, 45 days before the high-stakes May 9 vote. A total of 18,023 seats across the country are up for grabs, but 845 unopposed candidates are virtually assured of an election victory. In Quezon City, the most vote-rich city in the country, Mayor Joy Belmonte slams her challenger, a Nakalusugan representative, Mike Defensor, for pushing for the non-renewal of ABS-CBN's franchise in 2020 during the pandemic. ABS-CBN is located in Quezon City, where many of its employees who lost their jobs reside. In Manila, six candidates are running for mayor, which include Honey Lacuna, Amado Bagaching, Alex Lopez, Christy Lim, Onofre Abad, and Elmer Hamias. It's Team Marcos versus Team Fariñas for governor in Ilocos Norte. Aimee Marcos' son, Matthew Manotok, is running for re-election for governor against former Governor Rudy Fariñas. In Cavite, re-electionist Governor John Vic Remulia and running mate Tagaytay City Councilor Athena Tolentino kick off their campaign. In Cebu, the most vote-rich province, incumbent Governor Gwendolyn Garcia will face former Tourism Secretary Ace Dorano in the gubernatorial race. In Mindanao, Davao City Vice Mayor Baste Duterte, the youngest son of the president, seeks to take over his sister Sire Duterte's post as mayor. Senator Panfilo Lacson says the reason why he was dropped by Partido Reforma is due to campaign funding, not just his survey numbers. He clarifies this in a message to reporters on Friday, March 25. It was actually more about the issue of campaign expenses for their local candidates. His chief of staff was asking for 8 million pesos in additional funding, which I honestly told him I cannot produce. Alvarez dropped Laxon for Vice President Lenny Robredo after supposedly seeing Laxon's poor performance in the surveys. Meanwhile, Robredo's ratings are rising and she has been able to muster huge numbers in rallies in all provinces she's visited. Alvarez confirms asking Laxon for a budget but clarifies it would be used for poll watchers. Alvarez adds Robredo is not a member of Reforma so she has no obligation to the party. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. Vice President Lenny Robredo says if she becomes president, she will push for a version of the Security of Tenure or SOT bill that is acceptable to both employees and employers. Answering a question about micro, small, and medium enterprises or MSMEs on an episode of Candidatox by 1PH, Robredo says she would develop the Tenure bill. Robredo looks back at President Rodrigo Duterte's 2019 veto of the SOT bill with regret as it could have been a good first step to ending contractualization in the country. Sayang ako nito kasi mahalagang first step sana siya. Kasi hindi naman siya, again, hindi naman siya cast in stone na hindi siya pwedeng i-amend at a later time. Pero to be able to have a security of tenure bill will 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 give the pro- uh, parang employees the protection that they need. Um, siguro hindi ito 100%, pero meron ng gains. Robredo also signed a pact in November 2021 with labor leaders committing to work towards ending contractualization and investigating killings of trade unionists should she become the next president. Beginning April 1, the Philippines will allow the entry of fully vaccinated foreigners through its borders even without an exemption document. Acting Deputy Presidential Spokesperson Chris Ablan on Friday, March 25, says these foreigners will still need to comply with immigration and visa requirements. He adds foreign travelers should present acceptable proof of vaccination upon their entry to their country. Prior to this development, only select countries, categorized per risk level, were allowed to enter the country. Ablan says children below 12 years old are exempted from this rule, provided they are traveling with their fully vaccinated parents. All regions in the country are now under minimal risk case classification. Donald Trump sues 2016 U.S. presidential election rival Hillary Clinton and several other Democrats, alleging they tried to rig that election by tying his campaign to Russia. 
The lawsuit covers a long list of grievances the Republican former president repeatedly aired during his four years in the White House, and comes as he continues to falsely claim his 2020 election defeat by Democratic President Joe Biden was the result of widespread fraud. The suit alleges racketeering or misconduct and a conspiracy to commit injurious falsehood, among other claims. Russia's alleged election interference, which Moscow denies, sparked a two-year-long U.S. investigation headed by special counsel Robert Mueller. In 2019, Mueller released an exhaustive report detailing links between the Russian government and the Trump campaign, but did not charge any Trump associate with a criminal conspiracy. Mm -hmm.